Hello guys and welcome to the latest episode of Mr. Ashodi Snapchat Science. Today I just want to send a special shout out to 11SS7 working hard for their upcoming B3 exams. Right, so what we're going to be looking at today is the exchange of materials, for example glucose and oxygen, in humans. Now, by the end of the lesson we want to state how the complexity of an organism affects the rate of diffusion. We want to um, explain how organisms are adapted to maximise diffusion. And we also want to explain how the lungs and the small intestines are adapted to maximise the rate of diffusion. Or rate of diffusion in exchanging materials, should I say. So the first thing we want to look at is the question. Why do we need a transport system? For example, the respiratory system. Now, if we look at single-celled organisms, for example, our bacteria, bacteria are single-celled, and therefore they can rely simply on diffusion for, in order to get nutrients in or to get waste products out. They do not need a circulatory system. They do not need a respiratory system. Okay? Nutrients can simply diffuse in from a high concentration into a low concentration. Okay? And waste products can simply diffuse out. Okay? It is good enough for them. But what happens when an organism gets more complex? For example, if we move on to elephants or even us as human beings. Now, in our large organisms, diffusion is not a good enough process to simply rely on in order to get oxygen around the body. Imagine I also stand here with no circulatory system, no respiratory system, and expect oxygen to get to my key and vital organs by simply diffusing through the skin. It would take too long and we, I wouldn't be able to survive, I would die. And therefore, I need these systems. Now, the reason that why this is, is because the rate of diffusion decreases as the distance for diffusion increases. Okay, so I'll say that again. The rate of diffusion decreases as the distance for diffusion increases. So, this is not simply just related to the size of an organism. What we're relating it to now is the surface area to volume ratio. So if we go back and look at our single-celled organisms, for example, bacteria cells, they have a very large surface area to volume ratio and therefore the diffusion pathway is short. The shorter the diffusion pathway, the faster the rate of diffusion. Now, if we look at humans, we go in to look at our respiratory system now. As you know, we have lungs, okay? Now, in our lungs, we have these very, very tiny air sacs known as alveoli. And this is where diffusion um, takes place, shall I say. So if we go in and look at our alveoli, now oxygen, as you know, we breathe in oxygen and it comes down this structure here known as the bronchus, okay? Now it goes into our alveoli, which are the tiny air sacs, and these alveoli are surrounded by lots and lots of capillaries. Now as you can see, some of these capillaries are red and some of these capillaries are blue. Now the red indicates oxygenated blood and blue deoxygenated blood. Now, in this example, okay, because the alveoli are one cell thick, okay, I'll, don't forget that, that's a key point for your exam, we can simply rely on diffusion. Once it gets into our oxygen, gets into our alveoli, simply rely on um, oxygen to get into our alveoli and diffuse into our um, capillaries, okay? And the same vice versa with carbon dioxide. We can rely on oxygen to diffuse in and carbon dioxide to diffuse out, and obviously we breathe out carbon dioxide, okay? Now, that's our alveoli. Now, these alveoli have three main ways that you need to know for your exam as to why they are adapted for the exchange of materials. So the first thing is, alveoli are one cell thick, as I said before, so they are very thin. And this maintains a short diffusion pathway. The second thing is, they are surrounded by capillaries, don't forget we said. And therefore, what this means is, they maintain a very good blood supply. So as oxygen diffuses into the capillaries, the blood supply takes it away. And that maintains the diffusion gradient, or the concentration gradient, shall I say. So oxygen constantly moves from the al alveoli in a high concentration to the lower concentration in the capillaries. Because there's a good blood supply, the blood supply takes away the oxygen in the capillaries, and therefore the diffusion concentration gradient is always maintained. And the last thing we want to look at with the alveoli and how they are um, specified and adapted for the exchange of materials is there are lots and lots of alveoli and therefore there's a large surface area which benefits diffusion okay the larger surface area okay the faster the rate of diffusion okay now what we also want to look at is we've looked at our respiratory system now we want to look at our digestive system how is our digestive system adapted for um, the exchange of materials for example again glucose okay so, the walls of the small intestine, I'm not too sure if you can see this, but the walls of the small intestine are lined with tiny finger-like uh, projections 
known as villi. You can all see these folds in the walls of the um, small intestine. Now, these are known as villi, okay? Now, the villi are also adapted to allowing the exchange of materials to be very, very efficient. Now, it is a few ways. The first one is, Again, just like the alveoli, they are very, very thin, okay, and therefore they are one cell thick and the rate of diffusion is maintained very fast, uh, quite a lot, okay. Number two, there's a good blood supply, just like the alveoli, so that concentration gradient, just like we're speaking about in the alveoli, is maintained. And the last one, there are many of these tiny folds and therefore they produce a larger surface area. Don't forget we said the larger surface area is what um, increases the rate of diffusion. So those three points for both the alveoli and the small intestines are what you need to remember for your exams in terms of how they are adapted to increase the rate of diffusion. So, hopefully by the end of this lesson now, you are able to state how the complexity of an organism affects the rate of diffusion, explain how organisms are adapted to maximise diffusion, and explain how lungs and the small intestine are adapted for exchanging materials. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and revise. Mr. Ashoni, signing out.